Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of this Isle 2 Stormavik 1946 Iron Man series. Now, if you're watching this video, you may be familiar with the old Let's Plays done by 1F Jeff and Sorcerer Dave. This series aims to follow the same fundamental concepts that were put forth in those series. That being, if I die, I die. What does that look like? So, for this first campaign, I will be flying for the United States Navy. If on the first mission I die, that means it's over, and I can no longer fly for the United States in a subsequent campaign. I have to move on to another country like Russia, or Germany, or the United Kingdom, something like that. So, moving forward, here's a look at my pilot name, Jimmy McLovin. I know, great name pretty funny. It's going to stand out amongst the rest of the squadron, that's for sure. Um, and you may be wondering, what mods am I using? Well, if you can see up here in the top right corner, I am using the Bat Mod with the campaign add-ons and whatnot to make the degen actually work for the Bat Mod. So, let's take our first steps and start getting into this. So, First campaign, we're going to be flying for the United States Navy. Why, you may ask? Well, I'm an American, and the most I know is about the Pacific Theater of Operations. It's what I first started flying when I first got into this campaign. Like, not this campaign. This game, when I first started getting into this game, I flew for the United States Navy. I was flying Wildcats and stuff. It was pretty difficult, but pretty fun at the same time. So... We will not be doing this. These are like static campaigns. They're not dynamic. They're a bunch of pre-made missions uh, made by somebody out there on the internet. Um, and it's supposed to be replicate, replicate like in-depth operations and stuff. What we're going to be doing is a dynamic campaign like this. So rank, I will not be the lowest rank. I know in previous Let's Plays done by uh, one of Jeff and stuff, he was always doing the lowest rank. I will be an Ensign as the first rank because it makes sense. An Ensign is the lowest officer rank coming right out of the Naval Academy. We are going to be an Ensign. Aviation pilot first classes was kind of a special thing when flying was becoming more mainstream and was a designation for Navy pilots who were non-commissioned. Enlisted Navy pilots were aviation pilots. Now, we don't want to be that. We want to be an ensign. Ensign, lowest officer rank. We are commissioned officer. And it makes more sense of that would be, you know, getting promoted higher in the commissioned officer ranks and whatnot. So we'll be an ensign. It's pretty pretty low. We're going to be someone's wingman for a very long time. So it doesn't make too much of a difference. But it makes sense to me. So, difficulty. Let me get into this. We're going to be flying as realistic as possible, really. All this, um, turning fragile torpedoes on. Not that we're going to be using torpedoes in this campaign, but we're going to put it anyway. Now, views. I so views. I'm not going to be using any views to actually aid me in the flying, but say like I get shot up, I bail out over friendly territory. I want to I want to see what's going on while I'm just chilling there, you know? So I'm going to have these views for the cinematic purpose of seeing what's going on after I'm already done with my mission. Cuz odds are there's probably going to be some friendlies still doing stuff and dogfighting and we can see like how many people are, are left who actually survived and stuff like that. Um, padlocks, I'm not going to need that. Um, speed bar, yes, because uh, it's a bit too much, at least for me right now, to be looking at the gauges and stuff to specifically see what's going on. Um, and I'm going to leave all the views on, all the views on for the previously stated purpose. 
Now icons. Um, I will be using HUD icons because the AI is very good at spotting. And it uh, is a bit of an unfair advantage for the AI in this game if I don't have HUD icons on because they'll see me from like five kilometers away and I'll just get blindsided out of nowhere, which in a way is pretty realistic. But the way the AI works, it's a bit of an unfair advantage, so I'm leaving the HUD icons to at least level the playing field between me and the AI in this game. Uh, in addition, I mean, I'm not going to have map icons, so I'm not going to know, like, for ships and artillery pieces and stationary aircraft and stuff like that. Uh, also, player map icon, I want to be able to see where I am on the map, just for basic navigational purposes. Nothing too crazy. This is just some convenient stuff so that I'm not getting too crazy bogged down in uh, miscellaneous stuff other than the action. Now if like in a later campaign like you guys want me to actually like be more hardcore in these campaigns like if it's a breeze and it's pretty easy like I mean I'll, I'll be open to it in future campaigns but for now these are gonna be the settings and uh, I mean trust me this is the uh, these campaigns are not gonna be super easy um, I mean the campaign I plan on playing isn't gonna be too bad because I mean historically it wasn't bad too bad but death is always around the corner in this game let me tell you. So, in these miscellaneous settings, everything's on except no instant success. This is specifically for the dynamic campaign generator because if you have this option on, you can end up bailing out, like get shot down over friendly territory, bail out, and then you can't continue the campaign because the main objective was not completed. And ultimately, that just doesn't make much sense in the context of what we're doing here. So, Turning that off so that, like, if the objective isn't completed and, you know, we just, we gotta come home because we're damaged or we get shot down and gotta bail out or something like that, we can continue the campaign as long as we're not captured or something like that. So, that's the main settings out of the way. Let's move on. So, we're gonna be flying off a carrier for the United States Navy in the Pacific here. Let's start this up. So, Got a lot of options here, a lot of options. Let's see. First off, let's get that place of birth. Place of birth, birth, Miami. Miami, I mean, Miami is pretty good. We'll just keep it at Miami. Birth year. Uh, 1921 actually makes a lot of sense with what I'm going to do here. Uh, squadron, we're going to fly for VF-15. It says USS Hornet, but I'm... Pretty sure, historically, VF-15 flew off the USS Essex. Uh, I mean, feel free to fact check me in the comments if you want. But I'm pretty sure that they're actually supposed to be flying off the USS Essex. At least later in the war, I'm pretty sure. So, we will not be flying early war Wildcats here. We will not be flying Wildcats for this campaign. We are actually, we're going to fly Hellcats. We're going to fly Hellcats. Earliest campaign that we can fly Hellcats in is this Wake campaign. I mean, it's a campaign, but in reality, it's probably only going to be a couple missions because in real life, this is supposed to be representing the Wake raids of October 5th and 6th, 1943, where it was really kind of just like a training Mish training raid of sorts for new crew members that were uh, on like the Essex and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, it was really just to train the crews up for future com combat and conflicts because uh, the United States had no interest in actually retaking Wake later in the war because it served no purpose for the greater war goals. Um, so we're going to start there because. Honestly, it makes sense. New pilot, Ensign, coming right out of the Naval Academy. 
we're going to be getting our sea legs and doing these training raids here on Wake Island. So we're going to start there, only anticipated to be a couple missions, then we're going to end up going to Tarawa, which was an actual naval invasion by the United States Marine Corps of the island of Tarawa. Um, it's highly debated whether or not this was even like helpful or should have been done by the United States in its island hopping campaign because ultimately like in retrospective it was pretty irrelevant and ended up costing thousands and thousands of uh, lives so pretty controversial decision to invade this island but we will be flying over it after we complete the wake raids um, and then after that we'll be skipping in time a little bit we're gonna be going I mean, if I make it this far, I mean, this is all hypothetical here. Like, I could, I could die over Wake Island in the first mission for for all that I know. So, I'm just kind of laying out the groundwork here for what's possible to happen in this like series or this United States naval campaign here. So, after Tarawa, we would end up going to the Marianas. Uh, the Marianas are the islands of like Guam, Saipan, Tainan. Uh, Western Pacific, uh, we still, the United States, we still own those islands to this day, so, I mean, there's that, um, but the Japanese control them at this point. Uh, off the coast of the Marianas was the largest carrier battle in world history. The Battle of the Philippine Sea took place in June 1944, and I'm not, I don't think this is necessarily modeled in this campaign, this is more focused on the actual ground invasion of the Marianas Islands. I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. Battle of the Philippine Sea was June 19th and 20th. I did a little testing, and um, this Marianas campaign starts on the 14th of June, so maybe in the middle of the campaign we're going to have the Battle of the Philippine Sea. We'll see. If not... I may use missions from a static campaign to kind of represent the Battle of the Philippine Sea, and I mean, if we die in those, then it'll still count. Um, and, you know, whatever happens in that, I can translate through, uh, through some editing of files, any kills we get in those missions. Um, but anyway, after that, we'd be going to Palo. I think it's supposed to be like Pelilu. I'm not sure if that's actually what it is. Um, either way, another one of those island hopping campaign things. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of island hopping invasion support in these campaigns. That's kind of what American carriers did at this point in the war. Um, but yeah, Iwo Jima, Chichijima, like, yeah, at this point it's really just like ground pounding and stuff like that, so... We'll see, we'll see. We're going to start with Wake, though. Wake Island, Wake Raids, training, get our sea legs, stuff like that. So, here we go. Let's generate up that camp. Alright, here we go. So, Task Force 14 with, and I'm reading up here in the briefing, with three new Essex-class flat tops has been ordered to conduct raids against Japanese outposts to work up and prepare for major fleet actions and invasions. Today, our carriers will begin conducting offensive strikes against Wake Island while a force of cruisers runs in and bombards the installations. The Japanese have upgraded the island's defenses since our carriers last visited here more than a year ago. Intelligence suspects that you may have a chance to try out your new Hellcats against their Zeros. Your orders are to suppress the Japanese airstrip, harass the garrison, and render Wake Island ineffective as a forward combat base. Let's see. Okay, that's kind of what I was describing earlier. Um, okay, it says here that our squadron commanding officer is Lieutenant Commander Studing Stud Nikki. Okay, maybe McLovin is not going to stand out as much as I thought. Um, it's October 5th, 9.30 in the morning. Weather's pretty good. I think 7 out of 10 is good. 10 is, like, perfect. 1 is, like, thunderstorm, something like that. Um, so... What are we doing today? Today's mission, 6F6F3s, escorting some SBD-5 Nautiluses. 
Okay, Lieutenant Junior Grade Runkle. Done this before many times, so I'm going to be brief. Stay above the bombers. Maintain strict radio discipline. Do not get involved in dogfights. Aw, oh, man. We'll see about that. Keep your head on a swivel and try to come home safe. Okay. Ensign McLovin will lead the second flight uh, with aviation pilot first class Weirdish. Weirdish? Weirdish. Okay. These names are... <laughs> These names are uh, kind of getting to me already. Okay. We'll fly his wing. Okay, so I'm actually going to have a wingman of my own. Instead, we're going to have an enlisted pilot. Weirdish is going to be flying on our wing. Um, okay, McLovin and Weirdish. I like it. Okay. So, let's take a look at the plane we're going to be flying here. So, we are going to be flying the F6F3 Hellcat. This is the first production variant of the Hellcat. Um, and most of the time, we're going to be facing A6M zeros. I don't know. We'll be probably seeing like the initial variants, like the A6M221, which was used earlier in the war. A6M3s, which is a clipped wing variant of the zero, which has a better roll rate. And the A6M5, which is just an all-around upgraded version of the A6M221 version of the Zero. All the Zeros are better at turning than us. Um, they are better at overall energy retention. However, we have the advantage in diving speed, flat out speed, and diving, like high speed maneuverability. So, oh, and we also are like a flying tank. This thing can take cannon rounds, like actually. It can actually take a cannon round and live. However, if we end up with the zero on our butt, things will be bad. Because the zero, ultimately, is still a better pure dogfighting platform than this thing is. Now, you may be saying, the Hellcat had a ridiculous KD ratio, like 19,000 kills or something ridiculous like that, like 20 to 1, like, or 19 to 1 KD. A lot of that has to do with secondary, um, like, issues, or secondary, like, advantages that Hellcat's pilots had over Japanese pilots. Japanese pilots, after the initial like year of the war, the training started going downhill. All a lot of the experienced pilots were dying off, and there were just people up there flying who didn't really know what they were doing. And so you've got these American pilots, and there's like a rotation. They would have Americans, the um, Americans would have like a pilot rotation. So after like 30, 40 sorties. The pilots would be rotated back to, to the United States to then train up new pilots using their experience, because, I mean, they were just in the war. And as a result, the training program was a lot better, and new pilots for the U.S. Navy were coming in with a lot more experience and knowledge about dogfighting and about their planes than the Japanese pilots were. Add into that the addition of radar, which the Japanese, I mean, it's kind of hit or miss, not really doing too well in the radar department, not like the Americans at least. And like the tactics too, Japanese did not have the same kind of aerial tactics that the Americans did. Combine that with the poor pilot training and you just ending up with a recipe for combat disaster. And, well, that's what happened, 19 to 1 KD. I mean, it's crazy, but that in of itself is not indicative of a one-on-one -on -one matchup with between these two planes. The Hellcat is ultimately worse at dogfighting than the Zero. And we do not want to be in an all-out dogfight against the Zero because we will probably lose unless they're complete noobs. So... We gotta be careful in this thing. We've gotta maintain an advantage, and we've 
always got to keep them in front of us because if they get behind us, it's not going to be good unless we got someone to bail us out. So, let's get into it. Gonna have six Hellcats from our squadron flying. This is pretty long flight. Mm, okay. Let me double check to make sure I'm recording this. Good. All right. I think let's get. F oh wait, let's check the roster real quick. See any other weird names here? Okay, Lieutenant Commander Stadink Studnicki Imperioli. What? He's an ace though. Um, interesting name from Ohio. Joe Imperioli. Okay. Ray Runkle. Oh. Okay. Tataglia. Californian. Okay. Yankel. There's a lot of a lot of weird names. He's from Maine. Okay. Now this is gonna be our wingman. Weirdish from Tennessee. He's got a kill. He's got a kill. All right. Let's get flying. Oh. All right. So, uh, as you can see, I am using a track IR. Very nice, very helpful. All right, let's start this engine up. Sometimes the engines are be be a little weird. Come on. Yeah, the engines can be... I don't know. Starting it can be a bit of a pain. Come on. There we go. There we go. Okay, okay. I'm glad you decided to join us. Chill them. We're chilling. Over. All right, am I good to, like... No. As you can see, uh, cockpit, we got some gauges and stuff. One, two, zero. Yeah, I got zero, the speed one. bar because I do not want to have to be trying to, like, look at these things all the time. Alright, I think I'm going to speed up time a little bit until it's our time to go. Oh my gosh. There must be a lot of planes because uh, his guess die. Zero one. Oh, they're like doing catapult stuff. Okay, this is like bat mod related. Oh, I'm gonna put my wings out now. Put the canopy open. Historically, you put the canopy open because if something goes wrong, you really want to be able to get out immediately and not have to worry about opening that thing. Alright. Um, yeah, this is a little weird. I don't know how to use the catapult thing, which I think it's a bat mod. Yep, okay, let's go, let's go. Take off there. Nice clean takeoff. Three, three, That's zero. Good. Zero, five. I think our boys went that way. Or 
Praise the Lord. Automatic gears. Wildcat has manual gears. Don't have to deal with that. Alright, use the autopilot to get us in formation. Oh dang, we got four carriers up here. Now that's a task force. Jeez. Zero, so nine, I think zero. we're gonna zero, get one. in formation. This might be a little bit. Two, one, zero, one, zero. Yeah, this is the Hellcat. It's a nifty little machine. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I'll catch up with you guys once something's actually happening. So we get near weight. Or if I have something else to say. Uh, so that. I'll see you around. Alright everyone, uh, I'm back. I just got a message that there are fighters 2 o'clock and that somebody is under attack, but it doesn't seem like anyone's really responding to that. It might be a group of bombers or something that's up ahead of us. I'm not sure. Let's see, it's one of our boys. Two o'clock would have been the other Attention, direction. Fighters, three o'clock. Three okay. Hold on. Let me take control here. What's going on? Is there like somebody uh, below us? Let's get that supercharger in a position. Because we're pretty high up. Okay, that's our boys there. I don't know where that call-out's coming from. Make sure the prop pitch is down a little bit, because... This plane, despite, you know... It's got a radial engine, but boy, this thing loves to overheat when you push it a bit. So, let's... I'm gonna try and keep that down a bit. Maybe trim out the elevators. It's been a bit annoying. Anybody? Get him off me! Who is on you, cut? Okay. Get him off me. Yeah, visibility on this thing isn't super great either because of the birdcage canopy. I'm on fire. Ah! Whoa, dude. We're gonna try to that does not sound okay. Where are my boys at, bruh? Get out! Hit the silk! Dude, is everyone dying? Return to base immediately. Over. Guys, do your job! We need help! I think those are my boys up there. They're going pretty fast, jeez. That good, huh? Uh, I mean, we're only about halfway to the target, so Damn, my tail. I really don't know what's going on. Wait a second. Those don't look like my boys. Those look like... Those Domlesons. No, those are Avengers. This guy's good. No, those are my Hellcats. What am I thinking? Those 
These are my boys, right? Yeah, those are my boys. I don't know what's going on here. Alright, well, if they come... Oh, jeez. Clearly, there's a problem. Right, I'm gonna let the AI take control again. Speed things up a little bit. Really Get him off me. going on with that. One five zero one five. Okay, I think we're still just escorting these bombers to target here. Alright, well, I'll catch back up with you guys when something happens. Play my hail. Alright everyone, welcome back. Just popped in because uh, I wanted to show One, you guys. Five, zero, Those three, are the cruisers five. they were talking Return about in the briefing doing uh, some bombardment. Wake, there's Wake. Wake's in our sights now. That's the bombers Get we've been off. escorting. I think I've come to the conclusion that the people that are calling out on the radio were some bombers that showed up ahead of us because they were talking about making attack runs and stuff like that so they definitely are already down there doing stuff i just saw some yellow tracers yellow tracers are definitely japanese tracers because um, ours are red so that can't be good yeah i see some a fire in the clock below pitch set right damn get him off me so there's definitely some fighters down there, Attention. probably zeros, to be honest. Enemy ship. The attack. There's a lot of clouds over Wake here, this is definitely not be the, the day you'd want to do a level bombing run. I think that... I, oh, I keep forgetting that I actually... Jump, hit the still. I have a wingman. Six, uh, what's his name? Weird... Weirdo, or <laughs> whatever it is. Weirdish? Yeah, weirdish. Oh, wait, man. Weirdish. Weirdish. Oh, damn! This guy's good. Yeah, my wingman? Where is he? I don't see weirdish. Oh, oh crap. I see, I see a zero down there. Or something. It's smoking. Yeah, that's an enemy aircraft down there. It doesn't look like it's doing too hot. We are way up here. 4,000 meters. don't think they're going to be Attention, up here. Oh yeah, we got the airfield smoking. It looks like the bombers did something. Alright, I'm going to start slowly descending. So we can get into an attacking position on these planes here. Bombs away. Yeah, I want to bet those are zeros. It's really the only thing that's going to be here. I don't want to really be near Nine Wake Island destroyed. itself because that amount of AA, I don't want to get my wing blown off or something. Yeah, that's enemy aircraft. Uh, yeah. Oh, looks like one of our boys is sh Oh, dang, okay. One of our boys just set that guy on fire. Okay, I want to get in the fight here. Okay, I think that might be our wingman, weirdish. He's about to fly over my nose. Yeah, I'm trying to get lower. It looks like there's some some more zeros on the runway I'm trying to take off. Okay, we can bump down the supercharger here. We're Attention. getting low enough. Two o'clock. Looks like we even got a ship there. Okay, yeah, I see a couple enemies. Make sure my my six is clear. It looks pretty clear. Right, yeah, we're over Wake Island now. Yeah, there's a couple planes down there on the runway. Looks like they might have landed or something. Let's see if we can get in the, that guy in my sights in front of me here. I'm not seeing any other enemies, but I gotta be careful. 
Last thing I need is a zero coming out of the clouds oh, uh, as I go into a cloud. Uh, we, we can bump throttle up here. We want to get fast. Okay, I cannot see anything. Was I getting shot at by something? Might have been. Okay, okay I'm descending out of the clouds. Okay, he's over there. Clouds are pretty low too. I cannot see in here. Okay, hold on. That's enemy contacts over there as well. All right, let's start getting ready for con that here. Damn! Get him off me! Jeez, guys, getting shot at already. Alright, let's go over to the rear guy here. Attention, fighters! One o'clock! Combat ready. Alright. Oh dang, that's three of them. Alright, looks like we're just doing a little a little buzz here. Yeah, those are zeros. Green paint scheme. No shooting. Oh yeah, there we go. First kill, baby. Uh, let's stay up here. Yeah, let's go in the cloud. On full throttle. Open it up. Yeah, open up. I got it. Hang on. The cow flaps. Let that air run right through the engine. Attention, fighters. Two o'clock. Sadly, this variant of the Hellcat does not have water injection to give us temporary boost to our horsepower. But I'm okay with that. All right, let's get back over to my friends here. Dang, that zero blew up easy. Oh, that, what's going on down there? Is he in the ocean? That guy's flying really low. Jeez. I'm gonna stay up here because I I gotta maintain my advantage Return at all times. To base immediately. Over. Jeez, three got hit. Eight hit three. All right. It's uh oh, did the zero crash or something? Sure, but I see some of my boys going up here. Looks like there's a lot of installations on this island. But doing good. Not seeing anybody on my six. That's a, that's a good sign. Alright, let's let's get out of here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Zero, what, zero, what was that? Three, five. Was that just an errand tracer from that ship or something? Uh, that better have been. Okay, I want to get above the clouds here. Let's, let's get above the clouds. Because I can't see anything in here. Yeah. The Hellcat is not really known for being a great climber. It's because it's so dang heavy. Right. If the armor on this aircraft gives me another chance at life, I'll take it. Right, so yeah, we're back over friendly territory at least. Let's just bug out. I don't know where my guys went. I'm pretty sure they're going this this direction. They might be going. Okay, yeah, I see them. It's my guy. Like, it's Roger. It's so weirdish to get back on my my wing here. Oh, is that weirdish? Okay, weirdish is is on me now. Let's climb back up to these planes here. 
and they might actually be the bombers, because I only see three of them. And we put up six Hellcats, a flight of four, and a flight of two. I'm, I'm the lead of the flight of twos. Although, we could have lost the Hellcat. So, it's pain. Probably the AA. It's kind of looking that way. Yeah, I think we lost three. It was that guy who was saying we need to bail out. Alright, well. Let's get up to these guys. I think we're good. There's really, there's no more enemy planes in the air, I think. And that was kind of it. Got our first kill, though. Blew that 1-0 up. Easy. Man did not do a good maneuver for that situation. I had the energy advantage. And he tried to pull out, like, a hammer or something, but, like, bro, I had I had the energy advantage on that, on that one. So, I mean, there you go. That's, like, the, the not-so-good pilots coming in. Alright, well, I think I'm gonna skip ahead in this one. So we come in for the carrier landing, because carrier landings are, are rough, man. They're rough. Let me tell you. But, I'll see you guys then. Alright, so we're back. Um, back over the carrier fleet. Uh, I see... Our carriers are over there. I'm gonna tell my boy Weirdish here to just go home. Uh, let's see. I guess I'll tell him to break. I guess I don't know. Hold on. The this navigation. Roger, we're going home. to base. Yeah, Weirdish can go. Back to base, we're right, right here anyway. So now I gotta figure out which carrier is actually mine. Don't think it matters too much. In the game, of course. In real life, you gotta. I think it's this one. But, one of the. Yeah, I think that's it. They all look the same. Now let's ask for permission to land. You said you're cleared for landing, but the text says you're cleared for full stop. Oh, okay. oh watch the traffic. Back. That may be nice. Okay, let's... Oh wait, no, that's the carrier I'm supposed to land. Oh, jeez. Alright, well... Go around here real quick. Yeah, so that's the one, eh? Alright. Let's get in position. Okay, let's... Let's drop all the stuff, gears, a resting hook, landing, flaps, cockpit. Alright, here we go. This is probably going to be the scariest part of the entire mission. Okay. Because, yeah, this is pretty easy to die doing this. Drop it, drop it. There we go. Get the chocks in. There we go, nice. Raise up the flaps. There we go. We made it. How many of our boys made it? That's my boy Weirdish. These are some carriers. The Dauntlesses, that's one, two, okay, yeah, we lost three. It looks like those Avengers are missing. 
We'll see what happens in the debrief. But now, just, you know, hold up our wings. Looking nice. Alright, well, I think I'd call that a successful mission. Gonna go hit up the debriefing now. Let's see what happens. All right, the combat report. So, strike escort six. There were ten zeros apparently. I did not see that many. But looks like Runkle Tataglia Tataglia got a kill, and then Lovin got a kill. That's us. Okay, Tataglia died. And it says an enemy battleship destroyed? Excuse me? I don't think there's a battleship there, but... Holy crap, look at the amount of things that got blown up. Jeez. Yeah, anyway, let's, uh... Let's... Okay, so yeah, it looks like the Avengers got shot down here. Okay, yeah, they were A6M221, so those are like the... The initial ones that were used at like Pearl Harbor and stuff. So there it is, uh, Tataglia got shot down there. And this is where we shot down the Zeros. Yeah, there's the one that I blew up. Crashed. Shot down. There's another one shot down. I mean, I can't even pick it out out of here. But yeah, it looks like there are only like four Zeros. I don't know what ten. Where it's getting ten from. Ooh, looks like, yeah, okay. That's not great. See, all the Avengers got shot down. That's that's not no, not great, not great. Yes. Mm. So be it. Let's see what the next one has in store for us. Whoa. Okay, we've got a a scramble mission here. Not expecting this one. Enemy planes inbound from the northeast. Okay. Looks like we're not gonna have weirdish on our wing this time, but uh, yeah. Thanks for joining me in this first mission here. Hope to see you all again. I'll see you in the next one.